leaving the farm right here on Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, where information never sleeps. We're also broadcasting on TammyPepperman.org through No Borders Radio at NoBordersRadio.co.uk. We are entirely listener supported. Where and if you'd like to donate, please visit us at our respective sites, www.freedomslips.com. Click on our support pages, TammyPepperman.org, of course. Our support goes to our web services at Tamworth Web. Um, and, of course, you can find that under the No Borders Radio Player at TammyPepperman.org. These are interesting days. Last night was the beginning of a long-awaited celebratory party, for lack of a better word. We've got agents wailing, kicking and screaming and rolling on each other. And uh, these days just keep getting better and better. And of course, the false allegations are just rampant with these folks. It's very interesting when they're called on the evidence. Hello, provide evidence of your claims. I don't have to. I got a attorney work product doctrine that's going to save me. It looks like that's working out for you guys really well, and I think that you should continue to practice that type of uh, thing. It's a very, very efficient. Tonight, hopefully, we'll have a very special guest coming on to celebrate with me. It's been an interesting summer. We got uh, Rocco holed up in Wisconsin. And uh, prior to this, we were in receipt of communication. However, Wisconsin has decided to lock him up tight whereby we can't even get an ordained minister in there to visit him to see if he's okay or anything other as Scott Walker, Governor Scott Walker trumps up with his security forces on the backs of the taxpayers I might add to the tunes of millions trying to prevent his own comeuppance Of course, Scott Walker is the presentation of Pilate himself. And, uh, again, it just keeps getting better. And I suggest to all of the agents and attorneys and corporate counsel, keep torturing me because uh, I have a great imagination and uh, whatever it takes. Well, we're having a really bad day across the board from Bloomberg.com. Detroit cells sit empty as records disqualify guard candidates. Guards in Wayne County's three jails in Detroit rack up a thousand hours of overtime each day as the sheriff struggles to hire reinforcements and cells sit empty with no one to watch them. Unemployment in the bankrupt city hovers at 18%, yet in June, with 80 open jail jobs, only three applicants completed its training program after officials scrutinized their criminal records and put them through a battery of tests. The sheriff says he needs 230 more guards. Anyone interested that can pass a psych eval, for example, and is not a psychopath, please refer to... Uh, Detroit. It's nice to see the public law being upheld. Psychopaths are no longer up for employment opportunities anywhere. Nintendo is advertising its Pokemon from um, Harold Sun. .com, White House in lockdown after man jumps a fence on 9/11 anniversary. A man entered the grounds and was immediately apprehended, law enforcement officials told CNN. 
Security personnel seized the intruder after he broke in and police have declared the incident over have declared the incident over after taking the unidentified intruder into custody. Security risk coincides with the U.S. anniversary of 9-11. It also coincides with failing stock. Gotta get some advertisement in there. Why not throw in Pokemon? Shame on you, Nintendo. How low can you go? Some really interesting things that have been happening this week. Teacher accidentally shoots self and leg at a Utah school. My question is, why are there armed child predators at the Hitler Youth Camps? Do you threaten your children with weapons at home? Why are there teachers with weapons in school if not to terrorize your children into submission? It's called attention to what's going on in those Hitler Youth Camps, doesn't it? This is from abcnews.go.com. Teacher hurt when gun accidentally shatters toilet. A Utah elementary school teacher, elementary school teacher who was carrying a concealed weapon at school, was struck by fragments from a bullet and a porcelain toilet when her gun accidentally fired in a faculty bathroom on Thursday, officials said. If you're not capable of handling a weapon, you shouldn't be carrying them, number one. Number two, what are you doing armed in my schools around human children, if not to terrorize them with your weaponry? Of course, I expect an answer shortly, usually within 48 hours. <clears throat> Police descend on mansion to arrest leader of Japan, Yakuza Syndicate. This is coming out of the DailyMail.co.c. UK Army of Police descend on luxury mansion to arrest leader of Japan's most violent Yakuza syndicate. An army of riot police dramatically surrounded a luxury mansion belonging to the leader of Japan's most violent Yakuza syndicate over allegations he killed an elderly man at point blank range. Satoru Nomura, 67, the leader of the Kodokai, acknowledged as one of the most dangerous Yakuza crime syndicates in Japan was driven away from his home by armed police after being arrested on suspicion of killing 70-year-old Kunhiro Kajiwara more than 15 years ago. Television footage showed that then the armed officers who were wearing helmets and bulletproof vests descending on Nomura's vast residence in Kitakyushu, western Japan, where they had a face-off with members of the syndicate at the gate of the house. Man, it's like sons of anarchy out there. Not a good day to be uh, involved in the Confederacy, is it? These chief priests and elders, you know, they, they, these uh, folks being coming, fall guys. It's interesting to see all of these things coming out after the Rick Perry indictment. As everybody knows, he is general counsel, representation of the quote elders. All of a sudden, chief priests are in the shoot. Indian court urges an extradition for priests facing molest chase in charges in Minnesota. This is on the StarTribune.com. New Delhi and India court has recommended that the government extradite a Roman Catholic priest wanted in Minnesota on charges of sexually assaulting a teenage parishioner in Minnesota, a lawyer in the case said Sunday. It's now up to the federal government to decide whether the Reverend, Reverend Joseph Palanivel J. Paul should be sent to the U.S. to send trial said Kavin Kumar Mata, public prosecutor for India's Ministry of External Affairs. Recommendations by Magistrate Ajay Garg was made Friday. The United States had requested in 2011 that Jayapal be extradited. Apparently that's taking a focal point now, which is nice to see. From edp24.co.uk, former Norfolk 
Catholic priest back in court facing new sex abuse charges. Father Tony McSweeney, 67, and former children's home manager, wheelchair-bound John Stingmore, 72, allegedly molested the youths at Graft Grafton Close ha Children's Home in Hounslow, West London. McSweeney, who officiated at the 1990 wedding of boxing legend Frank Bruno and his ex-wife Laura, that's an ominous sign, isn't it, was a trainee priest at the time of the alleged attacks. Once part-time chaplain at Norwich City FC, he was leading the congregation at St. George's Church in North Norwich when the claims against him emerged. Both pensioners are accused of targeting children while well, Stingmore was in charge of the council-run home between February 1980 and July 1981. The pair have already pleaded not guilty to a string of charges relating to six victims aged 15 and under. He said, quote, the Crown's charges arise out of what the Crown say was a systematic, systematic sexual abuse of children in a care home in the west of London in the early part of the 1980s. Mr. Stingmore and Mr. Sweet McSweeney already await trial. There were numerous young children making similar complaints against Mr. McSweeney and Mr. Stingmore. McSweeney of Brighton Road North Peace Pottage, West Sussex, denies taking an indecent photograph of a child and two counts of indecent assault on a male person in the 90, in the 1980s. He further denies three counts of making indecent photo taking. Sorry, it's a typo. Indecent photographs of a child and a further count of possessing indecent images, which were allegedly found on a Dell laptop in January and February last year. Stingmore of Kennedy Court, Stonehouse Drive, St. Leonard's on C, East Sussex, denies five counts of indecent assault on a male person, indecent to see with a child, and taking an indecent photograph of a child. The court heard they were faced additional charges of sexual assault gross indecency and taking indecent photographs of children. The defendants indicated not guilty pleas and will enter formal pleas to the charges when they return to Southwark Crown Court on November 26th. Both were released on unconditional bail. Now remember, these folks are out and they're on the loose. Don't send your children to them, otherwise you will be also held accountable for these works. You are there to protect children. If you put them in the arms and hands of these sexual, perverted, uh, pedophilic, vile creatures, you are not doing your function. And you are putting children at risk of harm, knowing, knowing, without a doubt, that all of these individuals are predators of children. Priest Joseph Hermel, charged with sexual abuse, CorioJournal.com says, four months after he was removed from his ministry following an allegation of abuse, the Reverend Joseph Hermel was indicted Monday on six counts of sodomy and three counts of sexual abuse involving a minor, according to Meade County court officials. Debbie Medley, the Meade County Circuit Court Clerks and Herr Morrow was arrested after the grand jury indictment and released after posting $5,000 of a $25,000 FRN bond. She said the charges indicate the alleged victim was under 12 years of age. Herr Morrow, who could not be reached Tuesday, had been serving as a pastor at St. Francis of Assisi and Holy Cross Parishes in Marion County. According to a May 8 letter from Archbishop Joseph Kurtz to parishioners, her mural was placed on administrative leave after the archdiocese was, quote, contacted by an individual who reported that he had been sexually abused by Father Hermero in the 1970s. He also said the matter was being relayed to authorities in Meade County. In 2002, while he was working as a teacher at Trinity High School, her Merle was also put on leave after another man alleged that he had molested him at Camp Tall Trees in Otter Creek Park in the mid-1970s. A state police investigation ensued, but no charges were brought at that time. Of course, corporate counsel had the ball then. 
The Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Louisville said in a statement that it had cooperated with law enforcement officials as they have investigated these accusations and will continue to fully cooperate. The Archdiocese encourages victims of sexual abuse to report their abuse to the police and we hold all victims of abuse in our prayers, the statement said. Barbara Doris, Outreach Director of SNAP, the Survivors Network of Those Abused by Priests, said in a statement that the great group was grateful to the brave victims who have come forward and are giving courage to others to do the same. The report of Chris Kenning uh, can be reached at 502-582-4697 and I urge others not to simply report to police because uh, often they're still working for the Confederacy and that you do report to the media so that this can get the attention that it needs rather than being swept under the carpet by corporate counsel or another attorney willing to defend and uh, impede prosecution into these pedophiles. Fox59.com, Seymour defense attorney accused of being drunk in court, inappropriately touching a staff member, Shelbyville, September 11, 2014. A Seymour de defense attorney found himself in need of a lawyer of his own after being held in contempt of court and accused of being drunk. According to a report from the Shelby County Sheriff's Department, Joseph Robertson II, had driven from Seymour to Shelby County for a hearing Monday. A staff member accused him of touching her inappropriately on three different occasions and said he smelled of alcohol. During contempt of court proceedings, a witness said Robertson, quote, almost ran her off the roadway on his way to the courthouse, end quote. Police said Robertson failed three field sobriety tests, losing his balance during one of them. He agreed to a certified breath test, which tested .154, the report said. He was arrested on preliminary charges of operating a vehicle while intoxicated with endangerment, operating a vehicle with a BEC greater than .15%, operating a vehicle while intoxicated, and public intoxication. While being interviewed by police, Robertson said he'd been drinking on the morning of the hearing, consuming about a pint of vodka at about 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. He left between 11.30 a.m. and noon for the hearing, driving up Interstate 65 to State, Route, State Road 44 to get to Shelbyville. Robertson practices law in Seymour and has been a member of the Indiana Bar since 1981. He's also a former deputy prosecutor in Morgan County. I urge everybody who is on the road that day, if you were terrorized by this drunk attorney, please let the officials know. These things are no laughing matter. This guy says he doesn't mind being drunk, does he? 11 o'clock in the morning he starts. Just before Clark as he's gearing up to go defend whatever whatever it's all in the bag isn't it they really don't have to be sober it's all an act it's interesting now here's interesting today from pimppreacher.com Jewish rabbis have now infected 14 babies with herpes after sucking their penis where is child protective services we have just learned that babies infected with herpes as part of Part of a Matsuza Bepe, a controversial circumcision rite performed by many ultra orthodox rabbis, has just reached 14. During the circumcision rite, the rabbi sucks the blood from the penis after the foreskin has been cut, a rite that is still exposing children to herpes. It's also molesting, and this is called rape because it's penetrating the mouth. Period. Sick. Sick. Absolutely disgusting. I think I've got Bo with me, too. What do you think, Bo? Oh, yeah. Absolutely hideous. Sick. Disgusting process that they pass off as a procedure under religious um, premises. And, uh, you know, this is one of the reasons that Jesus... Jesus was uh, so against uh, organized religion, as it states over and over again, basically in the New Testament. And 
Absolutely, you know, they're nothing um, but predators. Just yeah, the, pre the priests and elders, which were part of the religious construct he was against. Uh, you know, he only got violent when he threw over the tables in the temple. Um, Absolutely. He says, what the hell are you doing trafficking my children? Yep. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, not too much to comment on today other than that uh, I would like to comment on the story I saw on the Daily Mail about... Uh, Kim Jong-un uh, supporting uh, Scottish independence Absolutely. Uh, and uh, even the uh, prime minister doesn't you know wouldn't necessarily welcome that uh, endorsement however now you, you people out there have to remember that uh, uh, North Korea has been demonized by the Western media and made out to be the bad guy, but everything that I've been reading on uh, the news media coming out of North Korea, Pyongyang um, news outlets, I mean, He's a it boy. shows him uh, being, you know, uh, you know, very caring and, uh, you know. Uh, he is t taking care of his people. He's adhering to public law. Now, people don't like to hear this or, you know, when they hear about Kim Jong-un, you know, restricting Internet access and stuff like that. But he is actually protecting those people. From indoctrination. From the indoctrination of the priests, scribes, and elders. Absolutely. And, and it's beautiful to see the way that he runs North Korea. Um, all of his citizens call him the glorious leader um, they cry in his presence, and from what evidence we've seen, he's just a beautiful soul, and um, it's, it's very interesting to see that he's all for the Scottish independence, and uh, you know, he, he's... And I would advise any quote-unquote country out there to take heed to... Um, what Kim Jong Un suggests, because it's probably in your best interest. His uncle was trying to perpetrate, you know, uh, treason when he was executed, and so was that other guy that he fired uh, with the um, thing. I mean, that's that's under the public law. If somebody's trying to harm hum humanity as a whole, well, you got to get rid of them. And I really like his choice of. Of execution methods because you know as you can see there's there's a very low crime rate in uh, North Korea in comparison to crime rate in the United States incorporated with all of Congress and all the attorneys and FBI agents running around perpetrating crime right when you like an actual uh, crime um, that's um, adverse to the public law like murder harm upon human beings um, psychological warfare and uh, you know all the rest of it that it's against the public law that's what you find in every single member uh, that's in league with the Congress aka Confederacy Absolutely, and to see Kim Jong-un stand there as a shield between his citizens and the outside world attempting to usurp their sovereignty um, is is absolutely beautiful to see. I mean, there was a lady uh, last year. CNN had done that report on the lady who had um, had an encounter with a tax agent. Remember that? Yes. An IRS agent, and she she ran after him, attacking him with her purse. Like, you know, it was just normal. She's like, get out of here. I don't I don't want to deal with you. She wasn't arrested. She wasn't gone down like she would be on the streets of the United States incorporated by the IRS agent. Nothing happened. She was free to say, you know, get the heck away from me. And uh, I love this. About yeah, here in the United Jones. States incorporated where they kill you to protect yourself from yourself. Right. Census agents even. Uh, if people were refusing to fill out the census, they were being gone down by, you know, all of these different uh, agencies and vilified and everything else over a census. And yet th those things do not occur in North Korea. Yeah, he's a rotten co-host, aren't you? Yeah, you spoil rotten. Well, the, um, 
it, it's just so sad to see how long they've been vilifying him and, and you know, trying to hold him down. And thankfully now... And he's just, t he just took it, you know. I mean, he comes back with his rebuttal that you'll never hear in the uh, Western media, if you will, you know. But, uh... To heed my warning um, out there, countries, um, you best start listening to um, Kim Jong-un in uh, North Korea. I mean, he could be the representation of Jesus if you think about what they've done to his country since 1953 when Congress attempted to usurp uh, North Korea and, and all of these things. And, and um, They've hammered him. They've financially attempted on him. I don't know how many times. Those and, um, you know, those things appear to be done and over with now. You know, Obama's ratings are so bad. Congress's ratings are so bad. But uh, Kim Jong-un has a new game coming out even. It's very oh, it's already out, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's called Glorious Leader. Glorious Leader. I mean, his, and, um, his people love him. Yeah, towards the end, Dennis Rodman comes in to help him, uh, you know. Fight his battle against the West in the streets of Pyongyang. Right. Protecting his citizens single-handedly. Uh, Obama doesn't do that. Obama's out no. golfing. Obama's game would be like, a, yeah, a taking a break from golf to go throw some, uh, you know, you know, veterans under a bus or something. Right, right. This is interesting. Well, I watch his, uh, you know, uh, Michelle Obama's speech and... Uh, uh, you know, with their creating of more uh, racism as a function of Congress. Yeah, absolutely. Did you hear that today? That uh, speech? Did you read that? The speech he gave and. No, I tried. She was to pitting. Walk uh, those things out. She's oh, expensive. she's pulling out the race card. You know, pitting African Americans against everybody, and so once again we see Congress is the ones that are the racists. They're the ones pulling the race card, and then they come in to represent everybody and say, oh, you need our protection, and we're going to protect you, and they protect you to death. Absolutely. With all their private acts and acts of commerce, which are only to benefit Congress at the behest of, uh, you know, the judges and attorney work product doctor, and they're going to discharge congressional bankruptcy at human beings' demise. That's how it works, folks. Did you see those beautiful uh, happenings in Canada? They've been trying to, they've been nailing people for corruption in Canada. And, and remember, Article 11 is of the Articles of Confederation. Canada is right there with the United States Incorporated, contracting together to human traffic. Oh, yeah. And, um, yeah, Canada came in under the Articles of Confederation back in 1777, sure. Right. Article 11 says, quote, Canada, acceding to this confederation and adjoining in the measures of the United States, shall be admitted into and entitled to all the advantages of this union, but no other colony shall be admitted to the same unless such admission be agreed to by nine states. Now, Canada, of course, is already in the confederacy, and we're finding a lot more coming out of uh Canadian law enforcement, which is beautiful because, of course, the Confederacy is being foreclosed upon. From the OttawaCitizen.com, Ottawa Force could try to fire officer guilty of deceit. Deceit, can you believe that? And corrupt practice. Well, Six. of course, lies and deceit are adverse to the public law. Right, that's the truth. You can't lie and be under the public law. If you lie, there's a potential harm there. Absolutely, and that, that is the tree of knowledge, is the tree of concepts, and I mean, of course, concepts... Deceit is just another version of lie. Right, it, it, that's where the word concept stems from, is deception, deception, obcept, or grabbing something of the mind. Uh, a lie does that all the time, and, and Joseph Goebbels was profound with that one. You know, he, he even said, if you speak a lie often enough, it becomes the truth. He was Hitler's propaganda minister. Yeah. And yeah, and we see that with, you know, every one coming against us, they they keep uh, saying the same lies and disinfo over and over and over again. Like if they say it enough times, right. people, you know, just jump on the consensus reality bandwagon. Absolutely. And, and when you press them for evidence of their claims or anything else, they're not able to come through with that. And they're only following the scripts of their handlers. And then they whine about, I don't have any handlers. Okay, you have this monotone and this 
um, script that you keep following and you can't add to that and then you're trying to tell me that you're not following the script but you can't add any detail or, or anything else in your claims and it's quite interesting to see Revolution or Revelation 18 actually playing out before our eyes. They're all whining, they're all wailing, uh, pissy little vermin, and they're actually getting quite interesting in how angry they are. I mean, yesterday, uh, Master Lewis uh, threatened to bash my head in, which I thought was very interesting because only effeminate males do that. I mean, they, the alpha male would never harm a female. Feminine males dream of, of course, bashing my head in, and he, and he specified it should be by a bat, you know, and, and threatening me with uh, the uh, worry of a homeless person coming up and bashing my head in with a bat. And I'll post all of these things. And for what? For, for, for posting some news stories and telling the truth about what's going on. They, they hate the truth. More than anything. Absolutely. And, and what got him started was I was showing him, you know, these corrupt politicians and corrupt detectives and agents and everything else. And he just went nuts. Yeah. Now, these uh, law study groups or, uh, you know, people in the law movement that are into these different uh, uh, forums and whatnot, supposedly they came on board because they were against the corruption. Well, we're finding out more and more they're just part of the controlled opposition. They're there to, you know, push the agenda of, uh, you know, <laughs> what their handlers want them to push. You know, consensus reality, go back to the law merchant. You have to, you know, you must, must, must get an attorney. Well, most of them are like, not so much for attorneys, but it doesn't matter because of the cognitive judgment. You go in there without an attorney. The judge is going to be acting as your attorney uh, on your behalf without you knowing it. And he'll put in a plea for you and, uh, you know, of course, the uh, cognitive judgment. And, of course, as we know in evidence, this is completely uh, adverse to judicial canon, which says they can only rule on evidence, evidencing themselves not to be a judge. That's why I call them all attorneys, a d d attorney in a black dress, calling himself a judge by title, never ever once evidences themselves to be anything other than an attorney. So why are you calling them a judge? They're not. Well, we condemned all their courts, remember? Read the, uh, you can read the uh, 215 pages that we sent to the House of Lords. It's got that all in there. Well, and, and we have to um, call attention to cognitive judgment because it doesn't apply to human beings. It does, however, apply to fictions. Right. Well, when you appear in their court, you're not appearing there as a human being. Right. And, um, of course, you're if you... conjured. Want, right. And if you want to read more on cognitive judgment, uh, uh, Zappa wrote a great article on uh, jurisdictional facts in enforcement actions on cognitive judgments of sister states quote, the voluntary waiver introduction uh, goes into, and I'll just read just the first paragraph because it explains it all. Despite long-standing irreverence for the cognitive judgment, the practice of confessing judgment under a warrant of attorney continues to be the harshest method of obtaining judgment against a debtor. These judgments have their basis in the cognitive, which is a device by which the debtor consents in advance to have judgment entered against him without notice or hearing on any claims that his creditors may subsequently make. At the time of the entry of judgment, the debtor is only nominally represented by an attorney who is often designated by the creditor and ordinarily unknown to the debtor. The practical effect of the cognitive, cognitive agreement is to give the creditor an immediate an uncontested judgment against the debtor. So, for any fictions out there, it might be better for you if you do this on your own. Because once you get that attorney in there representing you, and it could be the one in the black dress, already the judgment is against you and for your creditors. From the OttawaCitizen.com Six guilty verdicts in an internal police disciplinary hearing against an Ottawa sergeant who booked dates with sex trade workers and repeatedly breached policy by accessing confidential police records for personal reasons could result in dismissal. Sergeant Rohan B. Baki, a 21-year veteran, was found guilty under the Police Services Act Thursday of three counts of insubordination 
two counts of corrupt practice and one count of deceit. It's the latter three counts for the rarely laid charges of corrupt practice and deceit that could undermine any credibility the officer could have could have were he allowed to remain on the job. Ottawa Police Inspector Chris Rome said the entire ordeal showed an unprecedented case of deceit in the service. Understandably, he's looking at this as a serious thing, quote, Police Association President Matt Scoff said of the officer who was sweating profu profusely as the six guilty verdicts were read aloud. In preparing for submissions on penalty, the service will have to ask whether Bibaki can continue to command trust as an officer and whether he will ever be able to testify in a court of law given an eternal conviction for lying. It's interesting. Jesus said something about liars as well in uh, his walk along his journey. From allafrica.com, South Africa anti graft net widens against corrupt officials. Cape Town Minister of the Presidency for Planning, Performance, Monitoring, Evaluation, and Admission, or MPPPMEA. Jeff Reddy B says government aims to achieve over 100 convictions against persons fingered for corruption in the public service. And another one bites the dust. What do you think, Bo? It's interesting, Daisy. Burn, baby, burn. That's all I got to say. Um, burn, you know, baby, just, burn. I love that too, quote. It's too, it's just too long to come in, but. This makes it come up and it's more sweet. It is. These are the beautiful days of feasting and celebrating. I don't know. I don't know what the Patriots are gonna do. You know, they're gonna. They're not gonna have too much to rattle their sabers at any, too much anymore. You know. Um, you know. I mean, the innocent ones that are just caught up into the, you know, quote unquote truth movement or the quote unquote law movement, and, you know, they're still. Many, so many, you know, are probably out there innocently following these quote unquote gurus that are pitching to, you know, learn statute, learn all of their rules and procedures. You have to learn their rules and laws and procedures better than they know them, like uh, Rod Class states and, you know, Winston Shroud, who knows the uh, UCC inside and out. Uh, that's all statute, though. It has nothing to do with the public law, period. Well, and Winston Shroud is, is a sneaky one, I think, because a while back he was referring people to us, and then all of a sudden he's back on the bandwagon and, and all of these things. So we're, we'll have more updates uh, as soon we'll as we'll find out, yeah, and... soon enough here what happens to all of them. I know Rob Ryder's out there still pitching, um, you know, uh, well, it was this thing yesterday. It was on proced uh, procedure, I believe, and you know, I mean, all that stuff is what attorneys do. What are you, what are you trying to learn to be an attorney for? Yeah. Is attorney is turning you over to the court, you know, so the Thank judge you. can uh, you do his duty, discharges his duties under 28 U.S.C. 453. Thankfully. And it's a human trafficking system. Right. Well, you can't, we can't support that under the public law. No, but you can buy your rights in North Korea. That's the neatest thing. The Democratic People's Republic of North Korea. I mean, you can get everything there. So these attorneys and agents would be happy to uh, know that there's many, many rights offered in North Korea. You know, Kim Jong-un is really a glorious leader. It's, 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 it's time right now. It's no, There's no more riding the fence. You know, you're either going to... Uh, support the public law, you know, and adhere to public law it means do no harm and hold those accountable that do harm, remove them from society. Or you're going to continue to play um, um, in statute land, which, um, again, like you said, allows you to um, buy your rights in North Korea because that's where we put it. Right. And then he picked up the order, which is, you know, we were, we were wondering if he was going to, and then, you know. All of a sudden, we got word that, yeah, okay, we'll take it, and here we are. We'll and if you think that days. we've been pulling your leg this whole time, and we're making this stuff up, and we're just pulling ideas out of our rectum, and selling you all these esoteric concepts, uh, 
You haven't done your homework, your follow up on the documentation and the links that we provide. Or your for, handlers. For free. Right. For free. Or your handlers are telling you to not believe what's going on and not believe and, your own eyes, which yeah. is really sad. I mean, that's the hardest thing for me to watch is all of these agents being fall guys for their handlers when in reality they don't have to be fall guys. Their handlers no. aren't telling them what's going on. No. They need to make their own decisions right now and use their own discretion on what they're seeing because this is terrible. I don't like to see all of these fall guys being ca cannibalized because they're not the directors. They're, they're the puppets. I want to see the directors in this shoot. And sadly, these agents are going to go down with their ship, I guess. From WTLK... R dot com ex police chief charged with embezzlement in Isle Isle of White Isle White County Virginia. An ex police chief is now charged with embezzlement in Isle of Wight. Thirty nine year old Arliss V Reynolds of Windsor, Virginia, turned himself into Virginia State Police on Tuesday. Reynolds is now facing one felony count of embezzlement, one felony count of obtaining money under false pretenses. Both of these charges were handed up by the Isle of White County Grand Jury on Monday, September 8th, according to Virginia State Police. Reynolds has been released on bond. The charges result from an investigation conducted by the Virginia State Police Bureau of Criminal Investigation's Chesapeake Field Office. The investigation began in October 2013 when the Isle of White County Commonwealth's attorney requested that state police look into allegations made against Reynolds who at the time was employed by the town of Windsor as its police chief. Prosecution in this case is being handled by the Office of Attorney General Mark Herring and Senior Assistant Attorney General Patrick Dorgan has been appointed to serve as special prosecutor in the case on behalf of the Commonwealth. These are interesting days as these handlers are going away. I hope the agents wake up soon because these are sad times for them. Right. Well, you know, and towards the end here of all of our uh, presentations and research, um, good or bad as it may be, I mean, um, it's, it's just the truth when it comes down to, um, you know, if you want to nitpick on uh, our syntax and delivery and compare us with the you know talking heads in the mainstream media that are actually trained their whole lives for this kind of stuff um, alright go ahead but uh, you know you're again you're you're averting the, the real matter of fact here and towards the end I'm so glad that you brought out um, you know the final piece of the puzzle that people need to understand what the public law is about going back to the 12 tables um, and, and table uh, nine on the um, you know ex ex exceptions. Right. So no laws of, of exception no, shall be passed no laws or of proposed even. And that's that's the whole heart of the matter. Matter once you understand the the uh, law of, of exceptions. That's commercial acts and acts of commerce. Private, private acts, acts and acts of commerce. Sir. Acts of Congress, um, congressional action. Congress meeting with transgression. Any form of racism. They're your transgressors. They're confederacy. They gave you disclosure about all this stuff. And then the rah-rahs out there still keep, uh, you know, rah-rah-rah, uh, America forever, USA, USA, the confederacy. Here's my flag. I pledge allegiance. I pledge all my uh, assets and my and my offspring to offset congressional bankruptcy because I, I just love this criminal enterprise so much. Well, and, and that's something that, you know, it, it's sad for the, all of the attorneys to finally realize. Uh, the public law, Articles 1 and 2, laws of personal exception shall not be proposed, period. Laws concerning capital punishment of a citizen shall not be passed. And, of course, in Table 8, Courts and derelicts. Number 27, these guild members shall have the power to make for themselves any rule that they may wish, provided that they impair no part of the public law. Now, Congress, unlawful on its face, came in with a 
unlawful proposal in their related perversion of the original contract with the Treasury that ended with Article 1, Section um, 9, Clause 3, no bills of attainder or ex post facto law shall be passed. In the Declaration of Independence, they declared all human beings civilly dead. That is a capital punishment. That is declaring publicly a capital punishment without any authority by these guild members. And they're seeing what happens when they get caught when they do that. As the public law is the only law. The, the, you shall do no harm, absolutely no harm to human beings. And uh, specifically, if you are pretending to be their protector and garnering treasury funds. And in the action since the Declaration of Independence, this evidence is nothing but embezzlement from the treasury. Nothing but embezzlement from humankind. Nothing but embezzlement from law enforcement. Article 1, Section 9, Clause 3 says, No bill of attainder or ex post facto law shall be passed. That contract was with law enforcement. It was not with legislators or anybody who could propose or pass laws. And uh, Congress usurped, of course, the sheriff put in the position of steward all the way back to the separation of the spiritual and the temporal, which is the foundation of what the treasury was. It's the life ship or bishop. And, of course, that, that is another metaphor. It's, um, it's been interesting to see <coughs> from the Herald... Argus.com, ex-county deputy, deputy auditor charged with embezzlement and tax fraud. Former LaPorte County deputy auditor has been indicted by a federal grand jury in the Northern District of Indiana for embezzling more than $150,000 FRN from the LaPorte County government and committing tax fraud. Assistant Attorney General Leslie R. Caldwell of the D Justice Department's Criminal Division and U.S. Attorney David Capp of the Northern District of Indiana made the announcement. The indictment returned on Wednesday charges Mary Ray, 66, of Laporte, two counts each of theft of government monies and of making false statements on a tax return. According to the indictment from September 2011 through September, December 2012, and while she was working as the auditor, Ray embezzled more than 5,000 FRNs from Laporte County, which had received more than 10,000 in federal benefits in both 2011 and 2012. The indictment also alleges that Ray underreported her income on her U.S. individual tax returns in 2011 and 2012 by failing to report the embezzled funds. This case was investigated by the FBI and IRS criminal investigation with assistance from the Indiana State Police, the LaPorte County Sheriff's Department, and the Indiana State Board of Accounts. This case is being prosecuted by trial attorney Peter Halpern of the Criminal Division's Public Integrity Section and U.S. Attorney Donald J. Smith of the Northern District of Indiana. It's nice to see the accountability. Very nice. Very, very nice to see that uh, cleaning house. Cleaning house. Yeah, there's a delineation between, you know, adhering to the public law and following private acts and acts of commerce. If following private acts and acts of commerce, you're subject to them. You are subject. All those laws are still on the books. I mean, if that's your chosen form of government, as per the Atlantic Charter. Absolutely. Okay. Doctrine of Electrin, you keep uh, voting for it, you keep electing it, you keep accepting mail in that last name, getting uh, licenses, registrations, and, and tags, posting that last name, uh, admission of being a felon, um, as per the United States Code. Uh, 18 U.S.C. subsection 1342. Yes. 
fictional names and addresses. Okay, so, um, you know, path is wide, but the gate is narrow. So, to hold them accountable, we had to strip ourselves of all that stuff, all them titles and all those things sticking to the bottom of our shoe like a nasty old gum. And, um, let's go in there under, uh, their own rules, uh, even, um, that they opened up for different reasons under the, uh, Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act. Right, which but, is public law. I mean, it's just a translation of public law that they were using. And, um, yeah, but they were using, this, using it uh, to their own advantage as a side issue so they could sue each other. Absolutely. Under this false pretenses that one of them was a sovereign state. And none of them was ever a sovereign state. They were a corporation or under private acts and acts of commerce. You're a foreign state by definition. Um, 28 uh, U.S.C. 1603. Right, and 1610. And the other thing is they're always a fictitious plaintiff. They're not withstanding. And what we did was we came in with standing. I'm a human being. I'm the real deal here. And um, sadly, an attorney is a fictional thing. Judge is a fictional thing, especially if it's not in the action of being a judge. It could identify itself as being a judge if it was bound by judicial canon. However, they didn't want to play those games. But, uh, well, okay, I'll um, catch up with the rest of your show later on the... Um podcast uh, i've got a prior commitment i'm gonna get out of here and um so um yeah be thanks well. tammy uh we'll see you tomorrow night on the public law 10 to 12 p.m eastern standard and uh barring any uh any uh, changes in uh scheduling absolutely and, and thank you for coming on and and being here during these times because it, it is it's absolutely profound you know I get exhausted doing all of these things but um, it, it's absolutely worth it absolutely worth it I'm trying to pull up here the um, definition out of blacks of the fictitious plaintiff because that's that's one of the most profound things um, of all is that these attorneys still think that they have standing if you're an attorney and calling yourself an attorney, you're already a fiction. An attorney is a description. It is a uh, trade. It is not a being. And what you're calling yourself is a fiction, and it's against the law, according to 18 U.S.C. 1342. And again, we go back to the escape clause of 1929 Geneva Convention, this is the only w w way that any prisoner of war can be imprisoned for any length of time whatsoever is if by attempted escape or escape. And of course, 12 U.S.C. subsection 73, the attorney oath under the Banking Act, is evidence of escape. And these things are very interesting to watch as uh, these attorneys are rounded up and uh, under the laws of war, I mean, I'm not playing any games. Uh, I was forced on June 30th to come in and declare war and uh, uh, assume the position of an enemy. And of course, this is exhausting. Uh, of course, it hasn't been fun uh, being in this war, which would be otherwise called World War Three. And, um, you know, and, and and a lot of it is. It's uh, behind the scenes because I, I, I don't like collateral damage. I would rather not see any attorney or agent or anything killed because I, I need their production, their productive value. And, and that, those are the rules of the game. If, if they want to be discharging their congres congressional bankruptcy, well, I need a producer in there. And so I don't want to see them dead. From Black's Law Dictionary, 1st edition, 1891, fictitious plaintiff, a person appearing in a writ or record as the plaintiff in a suit, but who in reality does not exist, or who is ignorant of the suit and of the use of his name in it. It is a contempt of court to sue in the name of a fictitious party. So, United States Incorporated versus blah, blah, blah. Uh, all of these things are fictitious plaintiffs. We'll be back after the break, folks. Stick around. He never sleeps.
We're also simulcasting on TammyPepperman.org through No Borders Radio. No Borders Radio, or sorry, www. No Borders Radio. Co. Uk. We are listener supported. Where if you'd like to donate, please visit us at our respective sites. Um, let's see here. Very very interesting uh, to see. Uh, Headlines, why Ted Cruz was booed off stage at a Christian event. It's from Time.com this day. It's interesting. Of course, Senator Ted Cruz is not nearly as horrifying as some of the others. Salon.com, tech giants pull massive bait and switch on your privacy. Tech industry signs on to the USA Freedom Act, perhaps because they get expansive immunity for helping feds. To all of your agents out there, everybody who's got some skeletons in your closet, they're about to come out. President Obama just announced war of sorts in the Middle East, but he's not going to wait for congressional authorization to go to war. That's not the only area where the president is threatening to make Congress an afterthought. In spite of reports that the bill may not even get a vote before November's election, supporters of the USA Freedom Act have done several interesting things to push its passage in the last weeks. Last week, the bill's author, Senate Judiciary Committee Chairman Patrick Leahy, there's Patrick Leahy, released a letter from James Clapper and Eric Holder. A number of news outlets incorrectly reported the letters as an ambiguous, unambiguous endorsement of Leahy's bill. Leahy, of course, is well known for his Crimes Against Children Act, privacy law protecting pedophiles. Now, Leahy appears to be rolling on all the agents with skeletons in their closet and opening doors that you could have never imagined. He's not going to go down with the ship, is he? From NBC News, NBC12.com, building inspector charged with embezzlement appears in court. This is uh, two days ago, Colonial Heights, Virginia. As he made his way inside the Colonial Heights courthouse Tuesday morning, Kevin Joyce had few words for NBC12's cameras. Joyce was indicted by a grand jury on embezzlement charges and arrested on Friday. He could either resign or be fired. He chose to resign. Joyce requested a court-appointed attorney and was instructed to return to court at 9 a.m. October 20th. City officials did not disclose how much money was taken, but did say it was more than $1,000 at far ends. Court records show Colonial Heights prosecutors are working to get their hands on Joyce's bank account statements. Colonial Heights Building Inspectors Department declined to comment. Special prosecutor has been called in from Chesterfield to handle the case. From ClickOnDetroit.com, ex-Detroit Public Lighting Department worker charged with theft and embezzlement. Detroit, a former Detroit Public Lighting Department maintenance worker, has been charged with stealing property from the department and embezzling funds. Wayne County Prosecutor Kim Worthy said it's alleged that from May 12, 2012 until July 1, 2014, Rudolph Washington had no authority to use a PLD credit card and made approximately 79 unauthorized charges totaling $4,288.99 of RNs. He's also alleged to possess eight new General Electric brand street lamps and 96, 96 four-foot fluorescent light bulbs identified as City of Detroit property valued at $4,361 FRNs. Washington resigned from the department in August. He was arraigned Wednesday and given a $5,000 personal bond FRNs. Count one is embezzlement, 1000 or more or less than 20000 Count two, larceny by conversion, $1,000 or more but less than 20000 Count three, larceny, 1000 or more, but less than 20000 Stolen property, receiving and concealing, 1000 or more, but less than 20 St uh, Count five, stolen property, receiving and concealing, $1,000 or more, but less than 20000 Count six, larceny in a building. 
Count seven, financial transaction device, stealing, retaining without consent. Uh, it looks like uh, Michigan Code 750.157N1. Count eight, Michigan, or financial transaction device, illegal sale or use. That is under 750.157Q. And count nine, fan financial transaction device, possession, 750.157P. It's nice to see all of this accounting. IndyChannel.com, ex-manager at Terre Haute Airport faces, airport faces charges. Terre Haute, Indiana. Indiana State Police have arrested the former office and financial manager of Terre Haute International Airport on preliminary charges of theft, forgery, and fraud. Police said 41-year-old Rose M. Overpeck was being held on 100,000 FRN cash bond Thursday in the Vigo County Jail in Terre Haute. Police say Overpeck allegedly wrote unauthorized checks on accounts from the airport, used its credit cards, cash checks to the airport, and took petty cash. Total amount taken for her personal use was allegedly about $41,000 FRN. Overpeck was arrested at Terre Haute home Thursday afternoon following a seven-month investigation by state police and the State Board of Accounts. An airport official says Overpeck worked there nearly two years. The Associated Press left a phone message seeking comment from Overpeck's attorney. And then it has a period after that, so I'm assuming that they did not get a response. Interesting. Sorry about that, folks. I ran out of stuff. Here is a very dangerous fellow um, in Wisconsin recently, it looks like. Same location as the two little girls in the Slenderman incident. Which doesn't make sense when you talk to children about Slenderman and what it is. Uh, we're still out on that and uh, sifting through the evidence, but uh, it looks like a couple of little Manchurian candidates that had psychiatrists to begin with. Fox6now.com coworkers have called Waukesha detective quote a hazard on the job end quote. And now he's in trouble again. Waukesha County, this is from WITI. A Waukesha County detective whom co workers have called a hazard on the job is in trouble again, this time for domestic related disorderly conduct. Co workers call Waukesha County detective Pete Korn, someone who has been, quote, been asleep at the wheel for more than a decade, end quote. But he's managed to keep his job despite being officially reprimanded nine times since 2011 for misconduct and being suspended for three days earlier this year. Most recently, sources tell Fox 6 News, Corns was placed on administrative leave after co-workers suspected he had been coming to work high on opiates. The Waukesha County Sheriff's Department confirms there's an ongoing investigation, but right now, there's no evidence of wrongdoing as they wait for medical reports. In the meantime, without word more than anything, Waukesha police arrested Corns on Monday night, September 8th, for a domestic related disorderly conduct. That's when the sheriff finally suspended Corns' arrest powers. Corns' co workers have caught him sleeping on the job and snoring, using his work computer for personal things like accessing Craigslist more than 6,000 times and researching steroids. In January, he's accused of driving a squad car for two months without a valid driver's license. He's also been in trouble for not properly storing evidence. Documents show Corns has used his position as an officer to get special treatment, and at one point he's accused of referring to a Wakisha police officer as, quote, that lesbian detective, end quote. Through it all, Waukesha County Sheriff Dan Trawicki has stood by Corn's side. Quote, I've been here 35 years, so I know this employee, Pete Corns, from the day he started. I've supervised him personally for many, many, many years, and I've realized overall he's a good employee, Trawicki said. In June, Trawicki told Fox News he felt like Corn's behavior had changed for the better. Quote, if I thought this was a person who deserved to be terminated, and I would make that recommendation. I've done it before, end quote, Troy, he said. 
The Waukesha County Sheriff's Department came under fire this summer after a Fox 6 investigation revealed the laundry list of violations that have been leveled against corn over the years. The Waukesha County Sheriff's Department has issued this statement to Fox 6 News, quote, on September 9, 2014, Waukesha County Sheriff's Department Detective Pete Corns was arrested by the City of Waukesha Police Department on an alleged and on an allegation of domestic related disorderly conduct. Detective Corns has been with the Waukesha Sher County Sheriff's Department for approximately 26 years and is assigned to the Detective Bureau. Consistent with our normal practice, Detective Corns has been placed on administrative leave and his arrest powers have been suspended pending the outcome of the City of Waukesha Police Department's investigation and our internal investigation. We will not be releasing any further details of the case until the conclusion of both investigations, end quote. Interesting. I wonder why the sheriff wants to protect him. WNEP.com. Tonkana, teacher charged with corruption of minors. I haven't seen one of those since Socrates. Tom Canna, for the second time in his many days, Newswatch 16 has learned about a teacher accused of sexting or sending sexual text messages to underage students. Reports WNEP.com. Earlier this week, a teacher from Layton Area School District was charged. On Tuesday, a teacher from Tom Hanuk Area School District was accused of a similar crime and charged with corruption of minors. Students at Hanuk Area High School were not so surprised to hear a teacher had been accused of sexting a student. They were more surprised by the alleged source of these sexually explicit messages. Longtime history teacher and head of the drama department, Michael Chase of Dalton. There was a collective gasp from a group of students Newswatch 16 spoke with when they heard Mr. Chase had been charged, quote, it, high school was rough for me. He was one of the teachers who was never an issue. Always gave me a fair chance. I really hope these charges aren't true because I never would have seen that from him, end quote, said former Tonkana area student Mike Page. Chase was charged with corruption of minors following an investigation that took all summer. At the end of the last school year, a female student came forward saying Chase would text her about sex, gave her money for contraception, and send her links to porn sites. According to court papers, Michael Chase started sending text messages to the female student when she was a freshman back in 2012. That communication continued until the end of her junior year. That's when the girl told other teachers at Tonkanic area what was going on. In a statement to detectives, the girl said Chase often talked about sex and drugs used with her and other students, sometimes, something other students told Newswatch 16 they did notice among his favorite students and members of the drama club. Quote, I kind of suspected that was going on because he was really close to the students and he kind of seemed really awkward about it. End quote, added student Amanda Blankenship. Quote, I think it surprises a lot of people and it probably disgusts a lot of people. They don't know how to handle it, especially when they know a teacher for so long. And quotes in Tonkanic Area High School senior Riley Carnright. According to court papers, the alleged victim in this case told investigators she never had sexual contact with Michael Chase. Chase is charged with corruption of minors and misdemeanor. Wyoming County District Attorney told Newswatch 16 Chase is suspended from his job at Tonkanic Area High School. Interesting. NewYorkTimes.com is reporting ex-player charged and sell appeals to Derek Bougard. Two weeks before he died of an overdose in 2011, Derek Bougard of the Rangers was excused from his substance abuse rehabilitation in California and returned to New York. He drove to Long Island as he had done many times in the months before and paid a man for alleged illegally obtained prescription painkillers. This time, rather than cash, Bugard paid with a personal check. The man who deposited that check, Jordan Hart, 31, a former minor league hockey player with lifelong ties to the Islanders, was indicted Tuesday. 
charged with one count of conspiracy to distribute and possess with intent to distribute oxycodone. If convicted, Hart faces as long as 20 years in prison. The indictment filed in the United States District Court in Manhattan charges that Hart received the pills through prescriptions from Oscar Johnson, who was then part of a medical group that provided services to the minor league Utah Grizzly, where Hart played from 20, 2007 to 2009. Johnson prescribed Hart nearly 3,000 Percocet pills from 20, 2009 to 2011. The indictment says, though Hart was no longer with the team and was living in New York. Beginning in late 2010, the indictment charges Hart sold at least some of those pills to Bugard. The indictment says that Hart was introduced to Bugard through another Rangers player at the time. It does not identify the player. Hart from Huntington, New York on Long Island ended his career in 20, 2009 with the Bridgeport Sound Tigers minor league affiliate for the Islanders. His roots with the Islanders run deep. His father Jerry played for the team. From 72 to 79, part of a long NHL career, and Jordan Hart spent most of the past few years working for Hilton Capital Management. Garden City, New York, where the former Islanders star Clark Gillies is the vice president. Bogart, 6 feet, 8 inches, and 270 pounds, was one of the NHL's leading enforcers. After five seasons with the Minnesota Wild, which included a 2000 stint, 2009 stint in drug rehabilitation for his addiction to painkillers and sleeping pills. He signed a multiplayer, multi-year contract with the Rangers in 2010. Hart befriended Bugard in late 2010 about that time that Bugard played his last game. He was hurt in a fight with Ottawa's Mont Karkner in December 2010, sustaining a concussion and a soldier, shoulder injury and never played again. Bogard was under the care of the NHL substance abuse program when he continued to receive prescription pills from doctors affiliated with both the Rangers and the Wild. He augmented those drugs with ones he bought illegally. He occasionally stopped at automated teller machines on the way to Long Island to withdraw thousands of dollars to make his purchases from Hart. The indictment charges that in so many instances the drugs sold to Bogard came from prescriptions written by Johnson and mailed to Hart. At least once, Bugard chewed the pills while driving home, according to the indictment. On March 28, 2011, for example, Hart went to Huntington's pharmacy to fill ooh, a March 23 prescription from Johnson for 120 per Percocet pills. Three hours later, later, Bugard bought the pills from Hart, the indictment says. It was about a week later that Bugard, practicing with the Rangers, repe repeatedly fell down on the ice. He was soon sent to drug rehab in Southern California. Bugard died on May 13, 2011, at age 28, while on recess from that clinic. On his first night away back in Minneapolis, he drank and took pills. His brothers found him dead in his Minneapolis apartment. A medical examiner ruled that he had died of an accidental overdose of alcohol and oxycodone. Quirk said is it considered a highly addictive prescription painkiller that contains oxycodone and acetaminophen. A subsequent examination of his brain found that Bugard had chronic traumatic uh, encephalopathy or CTE, a degenerative brain disease caused by repeated blows to the head. His life and death were detailed in a series of articles in the New York Times in December of 2011. Two weeks before he died, Bugard was in New York on another excused recess from rehabilitation. On April 29th, he wrote a $4,000 check to Hart for painkillers, the indictment said. Hart deposited the check days later after Bugard's death. His father, Len, found the council check, which eventually led to the investigation. Quote, we miss Derek every minute of every day, and quote, Len Bugard Derek's father said in a statement issued through Corby and Demetrio Law Firm representing the family in a wrongful death suit against the NHL, quote, every effort to hold accountable those that contributed to my son's addiction and death is commendable. My family and I appreciate the tireless and persistence, persistent work of the New York Office of the Drug Enforcement Administration. It is our hope that their hard work will save our families from the heartbreak we endure, end quote. Pre Baraha Barara, the United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York, said Tuesday that Bugard's addiction, quote,
quote, fueled at least in part by the drugs that Johnson illegally prescribed and heart peddled for cash culminated in Bogart's tragic overdose death. The sports world is not exempt from federal narcotics law and should not expect to be, he added. In court in Manhattan, Hart wearing a light blue pullover and flip-flops burst tears from his eyes before entering a not guilty plea. He was ordered released on a $500,000 FR bond. He did not speak to reporters after the hearing, but his lawyer, Robert P. LaRusso, said prosecutors would have a hard time proving that Bugard died from the pills Hart is accused of selling. Those pills are always... Always. It's not a side effect that they shut down your bodily function. It is the effect of these drugs. They are used in lethal injections, as a matter of fact. And uh, in the promotion of genocide, it works well to make everything look like an accident or some kind of happen chance, when in reality it never is. These players, and, and especially actors and actresses, they are insured to the hilt, and there's some fund management team set up to catch those that uh, die and uh, maintain death derivatives. It's not very popular to be part of the Confederacy according to a couple of posh golf courses. In the NewYorkPost.com posh golf courses turned Obama away over Labor Day. Several elite Westchester County golf courses turned down President Obama's request to tee off on their leaks over Labor Day weekend, according to a broadcast report. Obama was turned down at the Trump National Golf Club, the Winged Foot, and Willow Ridge, among other high-end golf courses, club sources told WNBC, because the White House advance team gave them very short notice for a requested tee time on Saturday, August 30th. This is interesting. You know, a lot of people are very aware of the known enemy of humankind. Of course, aiding and abetting, giving them a quarter is the same as any other war. Found guilty, you lose all your stuff, don't you? It's always a good thing when we see people upholding the public law. Beautiful. Press TV. I R E U delegation is Israel has committed genocide. These members of the European Parliament are calling on the European Union to break diplomatic ties with Israel and implement sanctions against the country because of the war crimes it has committed against the people of Palestine. A delegation of 13 MEPs has just returned to Brussels from the Middle East and played a video to journalists showing a Palestinian child dying in the back of an ambulance. Delegation describes what Israel has done to the people of Gaza as genocide, the 50 day Israeli war on Gaza, of thousands dead and tens of thousands wounded. The delegation of MEPs is accusing the West of turning its back on the Palestinian people by not taking action against Israel. Politicians ex accuse Tel Aviv of continuing to break international laws by engaging in land grabs to build settlements in Palestine. The United Nations aid organization UNRWA estimates that it will cost 800 million re euro to reconstruct the buildings and infrastructure in Palestine that were recently destroyed by Israel during its 50-day bombardment of Gaza. In the meantime, hundreds of thousands of people will effectively remain homeless. The agency says 90% of the water in Gaza is now undrinkable. Disease is spreading and predicts that the area will be uninhabitable by the year 2020 unless the international community gets behind the citizens of Palestine. Shut down that corporation. Take uh, little senators and uh, use them to discharge congressional bankruptcy the way it's supposed to be. From PressDemocrat.com, drugs left in a car outside Sonoma County Courthouse put attorney in more legal trouble. An East Bay lawyer convicted of having methamphetamine at the Sonoma County Courthouse was arrested Tuesday on new drug charges when deputies searched her car after being notified of a dog locked inside, as Sheriff Sargent said. Attorney Shal Kaminsky, 34, of Pleasanton, was at the courthouse to be sentenced for the July 2013 incident in which witnesses said she tried to pass through court security with drugs in her purse. 
Judge Julie Conger ordered her to attend a drug treatment program after throwing out a more serious trespassing charge that could have made her eligible for jail. But while Kaminsky was in a court receiving her sentence, courthouse deputies responded to a report of a dog locked in a running car outside the Hall of Justice, Sergeant Dave Thompson said. Deputies searched the car after discovering its registration was invalid and found small amounts of what appeared to be meth, heroin, and marijuana as well as that as more than 20 syringes, Thompson said. Quote, this kind of thing kind of snowballed, said Thompson. Kaminsky was arrested when she emerged from the court. Baggies filled with prescription pill bottles, cash, and other items, including a license plate lay scattered across her hood as she sat in a nearby patrol car. Thompson said the dog was unharmed, the car's air conditioning was left on it as temperatures reached into the 80s. Kaminsky was to be booked on multiple counts of felony drug possession, but not animal abuse, Thompson said. She made headlines last year after getting caught with drugs on her way into the courthouse. She was representing a man being tried in Santa Rosa car show beating at the time. It's interesting what a web one weaves. From NOLA.com, lawyer pleads guilty to cyber stalking charge in the French Quarter. Noise ordinance feud gets probation. Stuart Smith, the New Orleans lawyer who sent a threatening text message to a vocal point, opponent of controversial French Quarter Noise Ordinance, pleaded guilty Tuesday to cyber stalking. Orleans Parish District, District Attorney Leon Conazaro's office charged Smith with a single misdemeanor count in July following a complaint. A Bourbon Street business owner and French Quarter Management District Chairman Robert Waters. Robert Waters, who has been sparring with Smith over clashing proposals to regulate noise in the French Quarter, told authorities he received a threatening text message from Smith on February 16th after a proposal that Smith back failed before the City Council in December of 2013, quote, I have, ha I have had your troubled history investigated, Smith wrote Waters. You have 24 hours to resign from FQMD or it will all be released. If you resign and keep your mouth shut, it will not. I'm sure your stockholders and partners would like this approach, end quote. Waters told authorities he felt the message was a, quote, attempt to corrupt a public official. But oh, wait a second, he's telling you that uh, he's got dirt on you, being corrupt? Isn't that an interesting little twist? Remember, Matthew 27 says Judas should never do that. Point the fingers at the chief priests and elders because he always, 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 always commits political suicide. And of course, the word Judas is Anglo-Saxon for, quote, with law. I'll continue reading. The proposed revisions to the city's noise ordinance were drafted in part by several French Quarter organizations that Smith represents, including the Ville Care property owners, residents, and associates, and French Quarter citizens. Those are both titles. Water supported a compromise that would have only affected Bourbon Street and the area around the House of Blues on Decatur Street. Smith, who's scheduled to appear for an arraignment on the charge was not president at Orleans Parish Municipal Court Judge Paulson's courtroom when the attorney Kyle Shonakas entered the plea on his behalf. Smith did not return a call for comment. Aww. It's really sad. If you can't really play the game, you may as well just step out, otherwise you get cannibalized really swiftly. Interesting out of South Florida as well. Recently, this is out of bizjournals.com, South Florida Business Journal. South Florida attorney charged in illegal precious metal schemes. Fort Lauderdale attorney Jay Bruce Grossman 
was hit with civil charges of aiding several precious metal schemes that defrauded customers. U.S. Commodity Futures Trading Commission filed a federal lawsuit against Grossman alleging that he helped clients sell metals such as gold, silver, platinum, and palladium on the off-market illegal exchanges. The metals were not actually delivered because the companies didn't acquire them, the CFTC said. Customers were steered into financing the most uh, for most of these deals through Hunter Wise Commodities, a company that Grossman worked with, according to the CFTC. The customers didn't receive the proceeds of their loans, but they were held liable for the debts. Quote, Grossman aided his clients in crafting the illusion that their schemes were legitimate and complied with the law. Grossman defrauded fraudulent customer forms, made material misrepresentations regarding the true nature of his clients' businesses, including the, including the courts and the CFTC, the complaint said. Grossman's unlawful actions ultimately enabled his clients to defraud thousands, thousands of unsophisticated retail customers out of millions of dollars. Hunter Wise agreed to pay $52.6 million in restitution to defrauded customers plus $55.4 million FRN civil penalty. He also allegedly worked with AmeriFirst Management which paid $25 million in restitution and a $10 million fine. Lloyd Commodities which paid $2 million in restitution and a $2 million fine secured precious metals and Joseph Glenn commodities. Grossman couldn't be reached for comment. Aww. He never wanted to talk to us. He was admitted to practice law in Florida in 1972 and remains active with the Florida Bar. CFTC wants to make Grossman pay a civil penalty and ban him from trading in precious metals. Of course. No more X chuckle for you. From the Globe and Mail.com, prominent tax lawyer charged in SNC scandal, the corporate scandal that has scarred SNC Lavillain Group Incorporated, has expanded beyond the company's Montreal headquarters with a set of criminal charges laid against a prominent tax lawyers part of an undercover police operation. Up until the beginning of this year, Constantine Kears, Constantine Kears, headed the tax group at the Montreal office of Dentons Canada LPP, the multinational law firm that was created when three firms, including Fraser, Milner, Cassgrain, merged in 2013. Mr. Kyers was charged Wednesday with extortion and obstruction of justice as part of an alleged plot to pay for some sort of statement from Ralph Ben Aiza, a former senior vice president with SNC and one of the central characters in the scandal that has shaken the Montreal based engineering giant. Sammy Bibawi, another former senior SNC executive who authorities say was one of the architects behind the vast bribery and fraud scheme at the company was also charged with obstruction of justice. Reached on his cell phone on Wednesday afternoon, Mr. Kearns declined to comment. Mr. Bibui could not be reached for comment. There's an outstanding warrant for Mr. Bibui's arrest stemming from an earlier set of charges, including fraud, money laundering, and bribing a foreign official that were laid in January. It's very, very interesting days for indeed. 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 Perhaps you should have played another game that did not involve violation of the public law. Man. There's six, 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 six folks here. CNN poll on CNN.com. Most think Congress is worse in their lifetime. Just feels that way as their evidence having done what they've been doing, which of course is a metaphor for revelation. SMH.com, 
Bigoil.au. Big Oil stands by his comment. Swindles East Timor. As Bobby Boyd surveyed his extensive property portfolio. The 19 or the 2011 Rolls Royce Ghost. Other luxury vehicles in his garage. He may well have collect, reflected with some satisfaction on a job well done. Nigerian National with a pension for signing off his emails. Bobby W. Boy Esquire. And wearing suits with waistcoats in the hot tropical weather. Made his fortune in East Timor where he was lauded as a hero in the local media. Boy had been working for the East Timorese government since 2010 and a role pivotal to the fledgling nation's prosperity. East Timor, still stumbling into nationhood, had just conducted the first tax audit of the oil companies that provide more than 90% of its revenue. Until then, the, com the oil companies essentially self-assessed, and East Timor was worried it was being ripped off. Boy's job was to issue the formal tax assessments to claw back unpaid revenue, he su succeeded brilliantly, forcing the oil companies to cough up more than $350 million FRNs. But as he was raking in the revenue, boy was robbing East Timor. Shocking truth was he was a convicted felon, a charlatan, an embezzler who had allegedly scammed $3.51 million FRNs from East Timor's threadbare treasury. Boy was arrested in June this year after the East Timorese tipped off the FBI in April of 2013. Yet East Timor's government was not the first to know. Not by a long shot. Emails obtained by Fairfax Media along with interviews of people involved in the saga attest that at least a dozen people working for the oil and gas industry knew about Boy's checkered past. In many cases, that knowledge stretched as far back as two years before East Timor's government says it independently realized Boyd's malfeasance. Senior staff at oil and gas giant ConocoPhillips, among others, kept secret their concerns about Boyd's credentials, even though he was manly to test it. Imposing an arrogant interloper will cost them a significant amount of money. For Pierre Richard Prosper, a partner at international law firm Agent Fox, who was acting for East Timor, three. The refusal to share the information was, quote, shocking and appalling, end quote. Quote, clearly they held this to be some kind of leverage. The question is against whom and for what intended gain, end quote. Oil industry sources and emails obtained by Fairfax Media reveal that oil companies became suspicious about Boy as early as December 2010 when an influential local website, Lao Hamatuk, ran a story about oil companies robbing East Timor of taxation. Figures about the adverse tax assessment were uncannily accurate, prompting concerns that Boy had leaked the information. Several industry sources said they tried to formally protest to the head of East Timor's Customs and Revenue Service, Cancio de Jesus Oliveira, but he allegedly fobbed them off. Emails show Conoco Phillips decided not to pursue the matter with East Timor's authorities any further. But the oil industry made further inquiries using investigators and lawyers to do due diligence on Boy. What they found out about him was far more disturbing than the unauthorized leaking of information. Emails sent in June 2011, one bearing the subject heading a Nigerian con artist in our midst, outlined how Boy's claims to have studied at Cambridge University and worked at energy giant Chevron and the international law firm Clifford Chance were fake. As the email noted, I imagine the Timor government would be most embarrassed. The email was circulated to a number of Conical Phillips, Austria, Australia executives. The investigation, investigations uncovered further evidence of Boyd's unsavory past. Boy has served three years in prison in California for embezzlement in 2007 and had been banned for life by the New York Stock Exchange after defrauding clients of their stocks in, 20, in 2004. By mid-2012, oil company staff were also aware of serious problems with Opus and Pest, a company that was awarded a lucrative contract to provide tax advice to the East Timorese government. <coughs> Excuse me. According to emails obtained by Fairfax Media, Conoco Phillips deduced that the company was registered four days after it was awarded the contract. Moreover, the Opus and Pest contracts 
were unusually buried, buried on the transparency portal of the Ministry of Finance. The company's website looked like a cotton-paste job. Inquiries to open some vets' office in New York for a contract elicited Bobby Boyd's personal email address. Opus and Bass were secretly owned by a boy who used the sham company. It later emerged to siphon $3.5 million from East Timor's Threadbare Treasury into bank accounts established in New York. Boy wrote Opus and Bass bid document was on the company on the committee that awarded the contract. The FBI states that Boy used his stature to dictate the winner. According to the FBI, Boy uses proceeds of his fraud to purchase the Rolls Royce. Bentley Continental and a Range Rover along with U.S. $20,000 FRN and watches and a portfolio of four homes in New Jersey. It's an interesting, I think it's missing a couple zeros. Conoco Phillips had informed the East Timor's government and would have saved the impoverished nation at least $2 million FRNs. By mid-2012, only $1.5 million had been wired to Boyd's fraudulent account. One industry source said the companies went as far to track the payments made to the company and realized the accounts were linked to Boy. Everybody knew. Nobody did anything, said one industry boys. A uh, source who was among those aware of Boy's past, quote, they kept it in their back pocket. Well, yeah, he's very, very efficient for business. Gotta keep this sham up, otherwise there is no such thing as government, right? Hint, hint, wink, wink. Interesting. Very interesting to see these new reports coming out explaining in detail how a quote government operates. Tricky little little shysters there. In the Golden Gate Express dot org breaking district attorney expense charges against former professor. San Francisco District Attorney charged Mark Landis with a 16 count of invasion, invasion of privacy today after police arrested the former San Francisco State Professor for allegedly filming students while they used the restroom in December. This was an interesting one. You know, knowing what we know about the CAFR reporting system and all of, um, oh goodness, uh, I forgot his name. You can find his site at uh, CAFR1.com. Uh, but uh, it's interesting what he's exposed to his own detriment. I mean, speaking the truth is no easy thing, especially when you're a former trader. And uh, I'll continue reading from the Golden Gate Express.org. Assistant District Attorney Laura Carwile expanded a protective order to prevent Landis from contacting a 16th victim. The victims are scared and don't want to be contacted by Mr. Landis, Carwell said in the courtroom. Landis, who arrived late to the Hall of Justice for the hearing, has since had his passport seized as evidence. Carwell asked that he not request another. Landis pleaded not guilty to 15 counts of invasion of privacy July 29th after his resignation from the San Francisco State Accounting Department. July 18th. Quote, I don't really want to talk to you, said Time No NGO defense attorney for Landis. Quote, any information I give you really doesn't help me. End quote. Landis is expected to appear in court November 5th. <laughs> How does this help me? You, you've got our accountant. Oh boy. We thought it was bad with all of these agents crying. His attorney sure doesn't want to divulge any information, does he? Stop taking my accountant's prisoner of war. They've got a lot of information on everybody. It's interesting how um, so many fall guys have come into existence after Rick Perry's indictment, too. Talk about loose slips, sinking ships. Never seen anything, anything so um, swift and uh, massive as these uh, folks are rounded up. And I have a feeling that uh, 
That little birdie squealing on everybody. It's got a lot of information being general counsel. From RT.com. September 9th. Lavrov. West may use ISIS as a pretext to bomb Syrian government forces. Absolutely. It's always been a presentation. 1947 National Security Act. Central Intelligence Group turns into the Central Intelligence Agency and by the time you get to page 12 a book for supplementary detailed staff reports foreign military intelligence of the church committee reports you find on page 12 that the Central Intelligence Agency is nothing but a production company this is what it does Headline from New York Times dot com this week for New York legislators indictments are no obstacle to seeking reelection. Of course. Sheeple drugged up by lithium in the water and soma theory all around them and feed bag full of stuff that drugs them up and makes them sleepy. Of course they don't care about criminals. They're gonna keep on voting! Voting doctrine of elections. But that's all changed now too, as we've realized it. Uh, one cannot enter into a contract if they're drugged up by their government officials, putting lithium in the water. It's also a form of chemical and biological warfare. It is not penciled in to the laws of war might want to read those find those at the Avalon sorry about that folks always something isn't it all this techy stuff and oh boy it's just interesting days these days have you all noticed that there's absolutely no news other than all of these things that are occurring and the, you know, the United States Incorporated is of course you know telling you that the sky is falling and uh, Pikachu presentation there today at the White House uh, Nintendo must be falling on hard times to be advertising this Pokemon character 